Hey everybody and welcome back to another redstone video. Today I will show you how to build my mini slots. A gambling machine so small and easy to build, you can make it fit pretty much anywhere. To play, you just put your diamonds into this dropper and hit the button. One of the items will get taken out and with a tiny bit of luck, you get two diamonds in return. Only diamonds get accepted and while you cannot change the payout amount, you can change the winning probability. More on that in the tutorial. This machine works in both the Minecraft Java and the Bedrock Edition and because it is so tiny, it isn't really meant as the main attraction of your casino, but instead as kind of a functional piece of decoration. For more complex gambling machines, check out my other tutorials. Ok, let's finally go over how it works. If you want to jump straight to the tutorial instead, feel free to use the timestamps given in the video description. As soon as you hit the button, the stopper will attempt to transfer an item into the hopper behind it. As you can see, this hopper only really has space for diamonds though, which is why any other items won't be accepted. When a diamond enters the hopper, that then raises the total number of items inside to 23. Enough items for the comparator to change its output signal strength from 1 to 2, activating the notebook sound and shortly unpowering this redstone torch, thus resetting the item filter again. Meanwhile, the increased signal strength also powers this dropper hopper circuit. As you may or may not know, droppers always choose the items they give out from a random slot of their inventory. So as you can see, this one is filled with a selection of stackable and non-stackable items. Whenever a stackable item is selected to be put into the hopper, that only changes the fill level of the dropper very minimally, whereas a non-stackable item accounts for a ninth of its maximum content. Therefore, the signal strength outputted by the comparator only changes if one of the non-stackable items is chosen. Actually, the signal strength changes twice. Once when the item leaves the dropper, and the second time when it returns. These two changes are then detected by this observer, activating both the output dropper and the note block. And that's pretty much how it all works. Let me show you how to build it. For this build, you will need an area that is at least one block wide, six blocks high, and also six blocks deep. So that makes for a space of at least four blocks below your floor level and three blocks behind your wall. Starting off, you want to first place your payment dropper. So just go to this block right here and place it in this spot and then put a button on top of it. This can be any button, I'm just using the blackstone button for the better looks. Coming out of that one, you now want to place two blocks like this, take out this one and then place a half slab in this spot with a comparator on top of it coming out of this block, going into another block right here, then go down two blocks from there, once again take out this one, and place another one diagonally to this block. On top of these two blocks, you now want to place a bit of redstone dust, then a block of emerald right here, with a node block on top, and now just right click this one 13 times. And now, at the front of this node block, you want to just place your redstone torch. Below this block right here, you now want to place a dropper going towards the back of the machine, with a hopper going back into it, like this. Now place a block diagonally to the dropper, followed by a half slab, with a comparator coming out of the dropper, going into a bit of redstone dust, and on top of this redstone dust, you now want to place an upwards pointing observer with another observer coming out of that one going towards the front. This one then goes into a block with a block two blocks below that one, redstone dust on top of this block, and then just a note block behind it. And now just right click this one 18 times. On top of this block right here, you now want to place an upwards pointing dropper, like this, with a hopper going into it, then a barrel on top of that hopper, another hopper going into that barrel, and then a hopper going into this block right here. In order to set up the randomizer, you now need to open up this dropper down here, 
and fill it with a certain configuration of stackable and non-stackable items. Here's an example. If you want the winning probability to be 1 in 3, then you need to make sure that one out of three total items in this dropper is a non-stackable one. For an even game, where players don't really lose or gain any diamonds, you would need one non-stackable and one stackable item. And I personally like having a winning probability of 4 and 9, so that would be 4 stackable items out of 9 total items. That way it's relatively close to an even game, but you still make a bit of profit as the casino owner. Also make sure to use different stackable items, as yeah, they should not be able to stack with one another. For the item filter, you now want to rename 21 64 stackable items to pretty much anything you want. Just make sure it's something nobody will ever guess, like this. And now just put these items into the last four slots of this hopper right here. And the first slot you want to just fill with a single diamond. Now just open up this dropper down here and into that one you now want to put your remaining diamonds. So that's the payout dropper and also out of your earnings as the casino owner will just also land in this dropper. And now it should already be working. Just make sure that these three blocks of your floor are solid in order to ensure that the diamonds are always getting dispensed correctly. Okay, let's give it a try. Just put your diamonds into the dropper and hit the button. And I got lucky on my first try. Nice. And as you can see, it always just takes away one diamond. Okay, let's just go over how to decorate this thing. With your floor and wall in place, let's now start decorating. I personally like having an item frame in this spot with a diamond inside it, like this, and then crimson trapdoors on both sides of the dropper. Now let's power those from behind using a few levers. And just put your crimson slab on top of there and your painting in this spot. I like using this one. Okay, let's just give it another test try. And it seems like I got lucky. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you had fun building and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.